Welcome everyone. This is Marcy Hart from A Work of Heart. I'm back for video number four. Um, I'm running a little behind. I, it's been a couple months, I think, since I got a video out. So I thought, oh, i got to get something done because <laughs> time's going by. So, uh, yeah, I just want to tell everyone uh, thank you for all my new subscribers. And also for uh, the new, uh, older subscribers that are still hanging in there with me. Appreciate it. Um, it's very nice to have people that uh, follow you and care what you have to say. So uh, thank you to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate it. Um, well, I've got a lot of things to talk to you about. Uh, a lot of show and tell, whips, um, just a lot of different things since I've been on here last. So um, I guess I'll start right in. Uh, first of all, I wanted to show you I didn't have a chance to... Uh, show my journal like you know most people were on the ball and got it done in January and I just couldn't get it with it get with it so um, I thought I'd show you my journal and how I keep track of my cross stitch projects so it's nothing fancy I uh, basically just have a binder and I put a lot of my things in binders I have all my patterns in binders I can pick them up for like 50 cents at the thrift store and I usually will put like on the edge here you know what it is so like uh, if I have a lot of Christmas patterns, I have a binder just for Christmas patterns. I have one for Halloween patterns. Sometimes I have them for uh, designers like Mirabilia's. I'll have a separate binder for Mirabilia's and some for um, like Shepherd's Bush and that type of thing. So anyway, uh, this is just my basic binder. And I print off. I'm really into clip art and graphic art. So I love finding cute little things to mess with you know in the way of clip art so this is just something I found on Pinterest that I thought was really cute so I put that in there and how I basically have mine laid out um, I have just you know as you open it just uh, information miscellaneous things like back orders I keep in here I have a, a pencil holder for markers uh, pens pencils just so I have them handy I use a lot of colored markers for things uh, my intro page email. is just a uh, sorry a uh, uh, little girl sewing that I thought was real cute that I picked off of Pinterest and so I have it you know by index uh, index tabs here so my first one is projects at a glance it's just a quick list of you know what I have going and that type of thing and then I have a calendar for 2018 that I printed off and what I do with this calendar is I, be, I keep track every day uh, how many hours I work on whatever project I'm working on. I just jot it down. I mean, there has been a couple times when I forget, but overall, it's really handy. It helps me keep track of how much time that I've worked. I can go back and add up the hours to see, you know, what I've what I've done. But it's just a, a basic printout that you can get off the internet. Uh, just some cute uh, graphic art on that. Then, um, when I do get a project done. I uh, put it in this section called completed and uh, the thing I like about the binders is that you can take stuff out and rearrange stuff throw stuff away you don't have to go get a brand new journal I would just scratched out stuff so like on this one it was uh, Easter Peep which is one I'll be showing you here in a little bit and I show you know how much it costs I write down what the linen was what I use and that just general information so um, that's really handy for that. Just uh, and you can get, like I said, these printouts, all different kinds of things on Pinterest. Um, and then I have another one, uh, projects or whips section for that. And this, I really like this because it, I can put on here my project name, and there's information for whatever the project is you're working on. And so, like this is, I haven't started this one, but it's Brooks Books Advent Calendar. Um, which else 28 count um, linen you know so you can just you know write down the different information that you need on each project and keep a running tab on your list of you know what you're doing you know on each page then when it's when I'm done with that particular project I take it out and I put it in my completed so it's handy it's like okay it's done here it is and then in the year I'll be able to say okay I finished these projects this last year um, so that's a really nice one. Then I also have um, a section just for notes, just different things. Like if I'm watching you guys' videos and I see something I like or you know want to jot a note down, I, I have a separate section in there for that. Um, and then I have um, 
a section that's just designers. So I made up a bunch of these little funny ones with buttons on the top. And I write down particular designers I like. And I will write down if it's something I want to get. Then if I have it, I put a star next to it. So I know that, uh, you know, I've got that one, so I don't order another one. So I have a whole section that's just <laughs> designers here. And um, it's handy because it really it keeps track of, you know, who the designer was and what pattern it was. And, yeah, I, I really enjoy having that. Um, then I have a section that's just fabrics, and I'm starting to do this where... It's called Fabric Stash, and I just, I'm trying to keep little pieces, if I have any leftover, of fabric from different projects so that I can look at it and have a visual as to what color it is. I've only got three. I need to do several more, but, um, and sometimes I don't have a, a swatch that I can keep. So that's really handy to kind of look, you know, see what kind of fabrics or linens or whatever you're going to use uh, for a project. Then I have another section that's um, all of the, uh, colors for different threads. So like this one is Simply Shakers floss and I go in and I mark which ones I have. So I keep a running uh, list of the ones I have. Um, here is uh, Gentle Arts and you can get these on uh, the internet, just print them off. Uh, Weeks Dye Works and this one is Classic Color Works so I just, every time I get floss, I just come in here and I, I go down my list and I check off. So I kind of know what I've got, so I don't know, you know, over order or whatever. And, just, and then I also have a, a thread conversion list that I can refer to. And I also have a bead conversion um, list. So, like this one is uh, Mill Hill to Toho. So if I need to do, if I don't have a particular bead, because where I live, I can't just run to the store. We're 30 minutes from the nearest store, or longer actually, and um, that way if I need a particular color bead, it's, it just makes it quicker. So I have Meal Hill to uh, Mayuki, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, Meal Hill to, let's see, what's that one? Delica. So yeah, that's how I have my binder set up, and I know a lot of people have rotations and I started rotations but they just don't work for me I if I am not into whatever project I'm working on I just yeah so I I try the rotation thing and just I can't do that <laughs> so this is what works for me and it may not be for everyone but it works for me so I just thought I'd share that with you um, so the next thing um, yeah I've been super busy with <laughs> Uh, my husband and I are building a, a garage with a studio above it. We started a year ago in August. It's been a long, drawn-out project, but um, it's taken up every spare minute we have. But it's going to be so wonderful. Um, I'm getting a new studio. Everything that I have now in my home is going to be moved out to my studio. And so I am really, really excited about that. Um, I started out years ago crafting in a little tiny, teeny, tiny bedroom in a mobile home. That's what I started out when my husband and I first got married. And then over years, it just I was in a back porch for a while. We had a blanket that was hanging down over it because I'd get so cold in there from the drafts. And so over time and years, you know, I feel like, okay, finally I'm getting my dream studio. And I am just so excited. So part of the reason I haven't been able to get a video out is it's just time consuming. It's when you're doing it yourself, and we seem to do everything ourselves, um, it just goes a lot longer than what you anticipated. So, anyway, I'll get some pictures. I want to sh I want to show when um, you know when I start getting moved in and can get settled in. But I'm really excited. Just had to sh share that with you guys. Um, and two, right now we are just getting buried with snow. We we had our um, snow pretty much melted and starting to see green coming up in our pasture grass and everything. But in the last week and a half, we've gotten over two feet of snow where we live. And in fact, my husband, if you hear a motor in the background, he's out four-wheeling, pushing snow around, trying to move it out of the way because it's just, yeah. It's like, where's spring? I want spring now. Um, so I've been really having spring fever. So a lot of my projects that I've been working on are for spring. 
I didn't do anything for Valentine's Day, even though I love Valentine's Day because it's the heart-related thing, because of my name. But um, I've been stuck on spring, because I'm one spring. <laughs> so anyway, you'll see some of those things. So finishes. Um, the first thing uh, I want to show is Elise from the Snowflower Diaries. Um, if you recall, I had uh, got both of the patterns, both Elise and Josephine. And this is the one here. And I love these because, like I said before, they remind me of Marie Antoinette, maybe when she was younger. The movie with Kirsten Dunst, Marie, it was just it was one of my favorite movies. The costuming in that was amazing. This, uh, the decadence, the eye candy, everything. I just always loved that movie. In fact, I even bought Vanity Fair, the magazine, and they featured all of her costumes. Because I would get a lot of those ideas for the dolls that I would work on. Uh, for their dresses and things, it really gave me a lot of inspiration. And so I had to have these, so I got her done. Um, I had a couple old antique frames. They were, they're kind of beveled, if you can see the glass. They were, they're very old. Um, and I thought, oh, this will be perfect for her. Um, so she, I finally finished her. And I did her on uh, 32 uh, raw Belfast linen. Um, and I added these little things, just extra, like a little piece on her hair, just a dollar up a little bit, and a little bow with an uh, old rhinestone pin and a little drop bead, drop pearl. And I think it just sets her off really nice. And I'm going to do the other, I've got the beads still here that I've pulled out of my stash and stuff. I have a lot of rhinestone jewelry related things I pick up for doing my dolls, dresses, and that type of thing. And so I just pulled this out of the stash for her, but I love her. I think she turned out so cute. And and she looks really nice, I think, in that frame. You know, it fits her, you know, the antique, um, you know, interesting scroll work. And, yeah, so anyway, I was really tickled to show her. And like I said, I think the little additions I did on it really set her off nice. I really I plan on doing that, like I said, with um, Josephine. So anyway, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. The glare is so bad, it's hard to hold these up where you can see them. But I love this pattern. I think it's awesome. So anyway, she's done. And like I said, I'm, I'm planning on doing uh, Josephine. And if you recall, um, this is what she looks like. She's more in reds. From the Snowflower Diaries. So she'll be next. And I have a two, two of those frames that I found at a state sale years ago. And that's what I'm going to use for her. Okay, my other finish was um, Easter Peep by Brenda Gervais. You can see it back here. I just finished this the other day. Isn't he the cutest little guy? <laughs> I just, then I saw him. Oh, he's so cute. I had bought the pattern in January. Like within the next day after I got the pattern, I, I started on him. So what this is, is, um, let's see back here, uh, this is a piece that I got at the thrift store for $2, and it originally had chalkboard on the back, and this was white, but it was blue. So I took my spray paint, spray painted the whole thing. I didn't want the chalkboard, I just, you know, I'm not into the chalkboard thing right now anyway. I mean, I like, I like what Priscilla and everybody's doing with their designs, but I just... I wanted something different for this. I didn't want the black because it's too springy. So anyway, I took Priscilla's idea with the magnets. This has two magnets, one here and one here. This is just cardboard with the fabric wrapped over it. I used to do a lot of frames and matting with that type of thing. And another one here with the check and then put this. He stitched on 32 count cream Belfast and then added the Rick Rack on that. And then I also added the little button. I put a little cross stitch of yellow in the middle of the button. And then this is just some Easter grass down in here. And I put some silk covered little Easter eggs, tucked a couple of daffodils in there, and added this bow. This is actually on a magnet too because I want to be able to pull that off when I switch this out. I like Priscilla and Chelsea's idea of being able to switch things out with the different seasons. So that's kind of what why I had this in mind for that. So, but I just I love him. <laughs> I think he's so cute. All of her little bunny guys are just adorable. So, yeah, I just got him wrapped up yesterday. So I think he'll be 
really nice for Easter. And maybe, I don't know, I might even just keep him out year-round because he's just so cute. So, anyway, in that pattern, I'll show you the name of that if, if you want to see that. That stays there. Um, it's this one here. It is Easter Peep with Thy Needle and Thread by Brenda Gervais. That's the pattern I used. And like I said, I used 32 count. Cream Belfast, and I did everything by the with the called for DMC threads. So, yeah, he's he's a cutie. Uh, okay, then let's see the next one. Um, I did this little girl sewing. You know, I mentioned in one of my videos I'm going to be doing some doll presentation boxes, and so this little girl is finished, and I I still have to get her figured out what I'm going to do with the box, but it's a French design, and it will be going in a doll presentation box, I just, I haven't had time to, to work on it like I want to, but I love their, their designs, and this one, I couldn't find the book, and there was a freebie, I guess it's freebie on Pinterest, I'm not sure, but um, it was all over the Pinterest, so I thought, well, I'm going to stitch it, you know, because I can't find the book, so anyway, that's what she is really sweet little girl and so what I'm going to do is I picked out my fabrics and I think I'm not sure which one I haven't decided I, the toile and this one probably this one uh, just because I think the design will look better on something not not so busy you know and it's going to go and I think I showed you the the little doll that I bought that she's gonna have her own little box and I'm gonna be doing a video hopefully soon of the doll presentation boxing I think it's called pronounced cartonne uh, this actual art of um, doing cardboard boxes and stuff especially papers and fabrics and things so I'm gonna to try to get a video of that together to show that uh, so those are my finishes um, whips I am still working on uh, little country cottage needleworks. One new email. Uh, I need to remember shut that thing off. Um, this one here, this was ladybugs and bumblebees. And I, if you remember, I had changed a few of the colors in it, and I'm on this linen that's kind of a pale green. And I had this started the lettering in this and I didn't like it so now I'm going to rip that out and I'm going to go with the darker purple but that's how far I am on that one I think it's just the cutest little saying and I did switch out uh, I'm using seasons it's a variegated I don't even know where it got this if they still make these but I thought I gotta start using up some of my old threads you know it's a variegated green and I'm using that on the leaves on this just to give a little bit of variation. And I, I hope I'm going to have enough. I, I was using scraps. I bought some linens off of eBay. And, you know, sometimes I don't calculate the sizes of them very well. So this one's a little bit short, but I think I'll be okay. I'm going to probably sew a strip of fabric along that edge just to give me a little more to pull it over when I lace it. And so, yeah. Working on that one. Um, and let's see. I am almost finished with my angel. I have got her all done from lavender lace except for her hands. Um, and this is how she's coming along. Base is done. I got all of this done, I think, since the last time you, uh, I talked to you. Oop, I lost my magnet out of here so um, yeah she's she's getting there all I got to do is that and I was hoping I'd have it done uh, by the time I did this video but I didn't <laughs> so hopefully next video um, she'll be completed and I'll have her in the frame but she's beautiful just I'm really tickled with her um, I'm a little nervous about washing this um, I don't know you know, I've never done one, well, I guess I did with the Firefly Fairies, but it just makes me nervous, especially this, this up here, um, this was that, um, fiber, 
can't think of the name now. It's it's got a wool fuzzy feel to it, and it's like for um, doing furry things. That's kind of what that was supposed to be was a furry part of her, and you know, through here collar. Um, so I'm I don't know. It's not dirty really, but I just I feel better um, if they're washed. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but yeah, it's very close. I oh, wish I could have got her done before this video. So anyway. That's one I've been working on. Um, I've also been working on uh, Mary Bovey sampler. Um, I saw <clears throat> Natasha from Stitcherella is working on this, and Nicole from Nicole's Needlework. Hi, ladies. You're my inspiration for this. Um, they were working on this, and like I said, Nicole just finished hers. And it's just it's gorgeous. But this was by Stacy Stacy Nash Nash Primitives, the Mary Bovey sampler. And I was really drawn to that because it was just really different. You know, the fabric, <clears throat> excuse me, it was really unique, really rich. So I got that one, and I've been working on it. And this is how far that I have gotten on this one. These magnets, they stick to everything. So, but yeah, you can kind of see that, uh, the richness of that linen. It's just really beautiful modeled dark colors and I I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it because you know it's so dark but it's rich I mean um, I'll show you the, the stitches or not stitches but the threads against this really beautiful rich so you know these are the the threads and you know they're just really unique. Oh, showing you the back. Oh, that's great. <laughs> now you see how bad I am about the back. I don't care. Nobody's going to see it. Except, yeah, I know, but no one else knows. Um, so anyway, yeah, if you hold, if I hold these up, you can kind of see against that mottled, beautiful fabric, how pretty they are. They're just really different. So I've been working on that one and it goes it really goes pretty fast and the variegation in those threads is really really pretty I mean it's just gorgeous so anyway yeah if you want to see that one completed before I get mine done um, check out Nicole at Nicole's Needlework and you can see what a beautiful job she did on hers and like I said Natasha from Stitcherella is working on the same thing so okay so I think that's all of my works in progress right now um, so let's see on to uh, oh Ashley's roses <laughs> hi <laughs> again sorry about that my whole uh, tablet just went <laughs> so sorry for that little glitch there anyway um, I was going to show you um, that I'm working on Ashley's roses um, I, had, I think the last time I showed you I only had just a few stitches done um, if you remember this is the mirabilia here where she's reaching up into those beautiful roses and had her bouquet of roses uh, so anyway this is how far I've gotten on her so um, it, you know if you can tell by the pattern I'm working more down you know around that uh, skirt area um, there's a lot of variegation in white gray colors through here um, and so I I get kind of bored so I bounce down and get into some color for a while then I go back up and work some more on that but I'm wanting to get a little bit more done on that skirt and then I'm gonna move up and start I want to start working on her face to where I can kind of see you know if she starts to evolve basically so I've really been enjoying this. It's really working nice. And I, I basically, I followed Pam from Pam's Crafty Corner and got the instructions to make this PVC lap holder. And I love this thing. It's changed my life because uh, I usually stitch in hand, but on these bigger pieces, um, I like to have something where my hands are free, but I can stitch and watch TV because uh, most of my stitching, I only do at night. I don't have time during the day, so I'll stitch for maybe couple hours, three hours, four hours, sometimes later if I'm in the mood to go clear into midnight, but um, I, my hands get tired sometimes, and so I want something bigger 
that my hands are free and can just get after it, you know, and really work. And this thing is great. I thank you, Pam. It's really changed my life. I love it. Um, it costs about $16. My husband helped me pick out the parts for it. And Pam has all that information uh, on her YouTube video. And it's really easy to put together. I didn't glue it, so it can be taken apart if you want to take it with you. But it's firm. It sits on your lap really nice. And it's like if this was sitting, it has a little bit of an angle. So, um, you know, it's perfect for me. I mean, I, I really, really have been enjoying this. And it was so nice of her to share that tutorial. So, anyway, that's where I'm at. I want to keep working on her. Um, made a grime guard to help keep my, you know, keep it clean. Um, but my goal is I want to try to get two Mirabilias done this year. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to give it my best shot. We'll see. And this is one of them. Um, I love this one. I think my next one is going to be uh, one of the fairies from Mirabilia. And uh, I'll show you uh, some linen that I just got uh, for that. So anyway, uh, that's all my whips. Um, I'll get into my haul now. Um, it's Like I said, it's been a couple months, so I did buy some patterns. I was bad. I was really bad. But, you know... It's inspiring, and you know, you never know when you're just going to pick one up and start it. Like, you know, you need a fresh start. So, the first one I got was this Bluebird Tweet by Just Nan. It's so cute. And I don't know if I mentioned it in another video or not, but I have bluebirds in my kitchen. That's kind of what my theme is in my kitchens florals and bluebirds. And oh, that's really cute. So, One Two Three Stitch was having a sale on their um, bluebird patterns. So that's why I got that one. But anyway, by Just Nan. Um, I also picked up this one. It's called Seven Snowmen by All Through the Night. And this is a wool uh, piece. I do a fair amount of wool work too that I really like. But I love this one because I really have a big collection of snowmen. And I think this one's really cute. All those different the snow girls, snow boys, and just the different um, shapes that you can do. And it's a long like, table runner. I thought that was really cute. So I'm going to try to start that. Before, probably not till closer to winter. Uh, another Bluebird, Bluebird Garden by Artful Offerings. Uh, just got this one. I thought that was real sweet. Uh, Henny Penny from All Through the Night. I did a uh, little pumpkin man. I don't know if you remember that on my second video. Um, so I really like their patterns. They just got really unique, and I have a couple other ones coming in the mail. <laughs> so more to come. But anyway, she's cute, that chick underneath that big old sunflower. It's done, like I said, with wool, too. Uh, picked up this one also all through the night called Easter Wishes. It comes with the background that's pre-printed. You just go in with the wool for the chick, um, the flowers, <clears throat> and the, uh, the stitching, I think think was on, or no maybe that's pre-printed pre-printed but um anyway I have a thing for chicks with bonnets and hats and you'll see later in my video I've got a show and tell of a bunch of little ducks and chicks I've been working on with clothes hats and that type of thing so this I thought would be really sweet to uh, work on um <clears throat> I think I showed one of these in my other video but I got the other one uh this one um and I'm going to be doing a giveaway of this one. Later in my video, I'll give you the details on that. Because by accident, I ordered two for some reason. So I'm going to give it as a giveaway. But yeah, these two are a couple I want to do for my sewing room. Real cute with a spool of thread. Spool of thread and the scissors. And it's real cute. And these are by uh, uh, Natalie Sassone. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and then I picked this up um, at a thrift store, and I was going to try to get some of these for like 50 cents. I think the original was 12 bucks. But anyway, I was going to try to get some of these stitched for Valentine's Day because I love hearts. And, you know, I've got my name, Heart. I thought, well, yeah, but I just, I had Easter on the brain. I couldn't, I just got into Easter right off the bat. So, uh, and then I also picked up Plum Street Sampler's Cape Cod Keeps. I like that with the mermaid and the whale. I thought those were really neat. Really cute. And then uh, Country Cottage Needleworks Party Cakes. Cute. I thought those would be really cute to stitch up. 
<clears throat> and Summer at Cherry Hill. Um, isn't she cute? I like the reds, the rich reds. Like I said, my studio has a lot of red colors in it. And I love red, and so this will be really nice to have hanging in my studio. And then this one, Needle and Thread. Um, she was a character, a little gal there with her basket of sewing necessities. And the buttons that are incorporated into the piece. I thought was real sweet. So I picked that one up. And I've been slowly getting some of the Mirabilia mermaids. I didn't have any of the mermaids, but I picked this one up. This is the Emerald Mermaid. <clears throat> I got these actually off of eBay. But someday I really want to do a mermaid. I don't think I'll get to it this year. I do want to, like I said, my goal is to get two Mirabilias done. So Ashley's Roses and probably one of the fairies. And then maybe next year, if I can, I'm going to try to go for one of these. But So anyway, that's my pattern that I got. I also got some beautiful linen. Um, I had heard uh, uh, from Oh So Crafty, um, she was, I got my inspiration from her on the linen. She just finished, well, she does amazing, beautiful beautiful pieces and um, she had done uh, Titania which is this one and see it, it, it was done on looks like a raw Belfast maybe and you know it's okay but it, you know after I saw what she did um, I just thought oh if I'm gonna put that much time into it that much work I'm gonna get that type of fabric so I got this it's uh, what is the name of it now Okay, didn't write it down. Well, it's a soft peach, Lugana, opal, essent. Um, but anyway, it's it's hard to see it, you know, to get the real accurate colors. If you want a soft, beautiful, peachy pink linen, and like I said, to go with her, I think it'll be so much prettier than that one that she stitched on in the sample. So I put in an order with uh, weave, uh, Silk Weaver Fabrics, and I was kind of getting upset because it was taking so long. It was like almost a month, and I hadn't heard anything. And uh, so I called them and emailed them. I said, what's going on? You know, and I was like, I'm not going to order these guys again. <laughs> but then it was well worth the wait because they have to hand dye them and dry them, and it's a special process they do. Um, and so, yeah, once I got them, I was, I was really tickled. Um, so I had bought that one, and then I also got, um, I want to do, uh, this one. And this one is Midsummer Night Fairy, and it's a, okay, I wrote the name on this one. Royal Shimmer is the color on this one by, um, Mirabilia. So this fairy I want to do, and I had that linen originally, but now that I've seen this linen... Yeah, she's got to go on that. Don't you think? That beautiful shimmer. And like I said, I want to be happy. If I'm going to put hours and hours, which those mirabilias take hours and hours to do. I know it's itching. Um, I want something that I'm going to be really tickled with. So I think this was a lot better choice. And I haven't stitched on the opalescent yet. So I'm anxious to see what this is going to be like. But anyway, I think I may join their uh, Fabric of the Month Club. Um, they have a fabric of the month club, and it'd be interesting to see what kind of beautiful dye things that they do uh, and send out. Um, and one other fabric I got from One Two Three Stitch was this one, and it's uh, what is it called? Fairy. Oh, well, I had it written down, I could, but it fell out. I had to start this video because of that crash, and I must have lost the little tag. But it was something fairy, but it's pink, real pale pink, mint green, mottled, beautiful. And I got that from 123 Stitch. So, um, oh here, that's right here. Fairy Ring was the name of that. It's about a 12 by 13 piece I got. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful one too. So I think that will be really pretty to work up. And like I said, I got it from 123 Stitch. So those are my patterns and my uh, linens. Um, I love notions, so I thought I'd share a few little notions that I've picked up. Um, I was in Joanne's Fabrics a couple of weeks ago, and I came across these little button boxes. 
and they it's funny because they're the exact colors I have in my sewing room. I have this kind of rosy pinkish color because my drapes have a beautiful like wild rose pattern on it with these colors. So yeah, I thought, oh, gotta get those. And they weren't very much, but I thought they're real cute and they just kind of unscrew. You can put all kinds of stuff in them, whatever you want to put into them. So I picked up those. Um, I picked up this I thought was really cute. It looks like a tube of lipstick and it is, but it's a, if you spin it open, it's a little pin cushion. So I thought that was adorable. Got that at Hobby Lobby and wasn't very much, like a couple dollars is all that was. And actually when um, a friend of mine years ago used to do dolls, uh, one of a kind dolls like I did, and she used to take these old lipstick tubes, antique ones and stuff, and she would put, like when you'd go to twist it up like that, a little doll would come out of the top of that lipstick case, and it was the cutest thing, and a little doll is just tiny, a little skinny little thing, so, um, anyway, I thought that was cute. Like I said, I'm really into notions, and like, I have a little collection of pin cushions that I've managed to collect over the years. Um, I also got these buttons by Lamode. I thought these were real pretty. They're just a little glass cabochon with a picture on the back. I mean, they'd probably be easy to make some, you know, but I saw them and they were on sale. I thought, oh, those are pretty. I'm going to have to check those out and maybe make a needle miner out of one of each and then save the other three for, you know, some other project. But they're pretty flowers, butterflies. Um, I also, uh, when I, I was trying to find something for my needle minders, and I had found this metal thing at Michael's and I really liked it and I was so mad because I went in there a month later and tried to find another one because you know you start collecting them and then pretty soon you got more and you need another one and they I couldn't find it anywhere and they I don't know if it's just a seasonal thing that they did so I was really bummed because I, I need another one <laughs> so I happened to be in the thrift store again and found this letter M and it was black and so I thought Okay, get my spray paint out. <laughs> I'm not crazy with spray paint. So I spray painted it white, and it works out perfectly for my um, needle minders. And it's even got these little hooks on the bottom, so if I want to hang, like, some scissors, you know, off a, you know, whatever what they call, you know, you hang your scissors on. So anyway, that's what I ended up doing with that. So, and I, I had made uh, this, I think I mentioned I was going to make this needle minder out of the cross. And then I bought some other ones. This little guy has <laughs> cracked me up. It's just funny. I don't know. So anyway, just thought I'd share those. Um, another thing I picked up uh, at the thrift store, not the thrift store, but the antique store, was this beautiful pillow that somebody had made. That's all satin stitch, and I think it looks like it's silk thread. It's beautiful. And it's like they did all that work stitched it all up like little wild roses and then never made it into anything probably it's like oh I don't know I mean I wouldn't want somebody laying their head on something like that I mean I frame this thing you know I mean it's just the work that went into something like that so and it's done on linen it's got a, a back green fabric on the back but it's like they never did anything they just folded it and put it away and it's like oh so I'm going to put this in, like I said, my new kitchen area. You guys, if I ever get it done, you'll see what it's going to be like. <laughs> I keep talking about it. But anyway, um, that's uh, something I picked up at the antique store. Um, so, okay. Um, oh, then I also, since I had Easter on the brain, I had this little made in Japan little this doll. And I just thought his little teeth just, I don't know why, but it reminded me of a rabbit. So I made that little outfit for him and put the little flower in his hand and gave him ears, gave him a little bunny tail on his bum, and he's going to be going out with my Easter decorations. But he just, he just makes me smile <laughs> every time I see him. He's so sweet. I try to get, I buy a lot of little cheapy antique little bis doll stuff and dress them up into different little costumes and things. <clears throat> and then I also came across this little girl and I think she's just amazing. 
she reminds me of Alice from Alice in Wonderland. And I think what this is, a cake topper. The Germans used to make a lot of these. They put on cakes, birthday cakes and things. Um, it's not marked, but I know it's German because that face is just so detailed, beautifully done. And she's tiny. She's only got to be about two inches tall. And I think she's holding, it looks like kind of a rabbit. I can't really tell. Something wrapped up in her little towel, little blankie. But I loved it. Uh, it's, it's just amazing little piece to me. So I picked up that. Um, I'm also going to be working on, uh, I, I've worked on these two little googly dolls. And I'll put a picture in right here. So you can see um, what they look like when I got them. They were a mess. They do have some damage, um, the little girl especially, but fixed them up, patched them up, and made them some new outfits. And so they're going to go in one of those boxes I was telling you about. And I'm working on the piece right, starting to work on the piece right now, the cross stitch piece. Kind of like that little girl I showed you. This is going to be the same type of thing. And as I get further along on the box, I'll start sharing it with you so you can see what I'm doing. But these are quite valuable little dolls, actually. They're real sought after with collectors. And uh, they were pathetic. They just looked like little waifs when I got them. They had the ugliest little clothes on. They're just pathetic. So they're all spiffed up now and just, yeah, cute. And the box I'm going to use... Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. I think the snow is is causing something goofy with our power today. I don't know. Anyway, but this was the box that I'm going to use to put those two little googlies in. And uh, the little piece I'm going to cross stitch will go in there, and then the two dolls will go on each side. So we paint it, and you'll see as I um, get to work it on a little more. So anyway, um, okay, now I think I've shown everything except one thing. Um, like I said, this is kind of my show and tell, so I hope, um, yeah. oh, before I get into that, um, I want to talk about the giveaway. So what I want to do is I'd like to have a giveaway. I haven't had one. And, um, I'm going to donate, or, uh, use this my giveaway, the Jardin Preve, uh, design by Natalie Sasson, uh, this one here. And it's brand new because, like I said, I ordered it and then ended up getting two for some reason. So what I'd like to do is give this as a giveaway and I'll also include the threads. Um, I won't be putting the linen in or fabric because I don't, you know, everybody likes theirs differently. So um, to, to stitch on stuff differently. So anyway, I just need to make sure you're a subscriber is the only rules to be able to win this. Um, you're over the age of uh, 18. And I'd like for you to uh, mention in your video, or in my com in the comments section, just your favorite thing that you like about floss tube videos. What if it's stitch alongs? If it's the notions? If it's the patterns? Showing the patterns? Um, just whatever your favorite thing is that you like about floss tube videos, and it'll enter enter you in for the chance for the uh, giveaway. Um, don't say giveaway. Just um, just say whatever it is that you like. Um, and then I'll probably be doing the drawing um, probably be a couple weeks from now because I want to give people a little bit of time. Um, I'm, I'm not a real well-known floss tuber, um, so, you know, I'm not on, in, you know, social media that much to where people can see me as often as some of the other floss tubers. Um, I'm not on, I'm on Instagram, but I, I don't post. I, I don't even know why I opened up an account. Maybe one of these days I'll do it. I used to be on Facebook and I just, I had to get off. It was just too much drama and too much going on. And I had, I didn't have the time to keep up with it all. So I just do my own little thing now on YouTube. And, um, so I'm not as well, I'm not seen as much, I guess you could say, um, so I'm going to give a little time, at least two weeks, before I announce the winner uh, to give a few people more opportunity to possibly win it. So anyway, that's the rules. That's all you have to do. So I wanted to get that out of the way real quick. And then one more thing I just want to show you. Since I was talking about Easter, 
this is what I've been doing the last couple days. I'm really into these little left-in chicks um, and ducks, and this little duck was one I just, I've been making their bonnets and their hats, getting ready for Easter so I can put them in a display, but <clears throat> this is the little duck that I just finished with the little pansy bonnet. And I've got several of these. This was a little chick. Um, you know, these little chicks are porcelain and Lefton and Norcrest used to make them. A bunch of different companies made them. And I made her a little bonnet. And I just think they are so cute, you know, especially for spring and Easter. This little, little girl, she's got a little rose on her head. A little sprig of little buds, spring buds. And another little cheeky girl, and she's got petunias on her head with a little Easter eggs on her collar. But aren't they just adorable? I mean, nothing says spring to me than little peeps, little cheeky peeps and ducklings. And I'm thinking of this little guy, I didn't want to do too much on him because I like that little tuft on the top of his head. I didn't want to cover that up, so I just put a collar on him. <clears throat> but I'm thinking, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do with the ducks is display them in a little mini bird bath. Because I think it would just be so cute to have them in a, a little bird bath to where, you know, they're in there splashing and taking a bath. Um, we had a duck years ago named Daffy, and uh, she lived to be pretty old um, till the coyotes got her, which was really sad because she hung out with our dogs and the kids were little. And she used to get in their wading pool and not let the kids get in there to swim. It was like, no, this is my territory, you know. So... She was a character, and then we also had another picture of her with her tail up. She was in a bucket, you know, like a, just a regular old bucket, swimming in the water. It was in that bucket, and she was just a character, but it's always playing in the water. So I thought these little ducks, this one has a morning glory on its head, would be really cute to display in a, like a little mini bird bath, and then maybe have... Okay, I don't know what's going on. I guess my battery is going dead. I switch over to my little iPod, uh, so I better wrap this up. I don't have much time left. So just a quick uh, couple more of these little ducks I wanted to show you. My little chickens. I just think they're so cute. And perfect for spring. Just happy, sweet little little ducks and chicks. She's got petunias on top of her head with a little Easter egg necklace. <clears throat> and I don't know if I showed this before it got cut off or not, but the little morning glory duck. And then the fine little guy, I decided to leave playing because it's just a little chick on top of an egg. And I don't know, I might put something on him. I don't know. But anyway, so that's it. Um, like I said, I apologize for not getting a video out a little sooner, but... Hopefully, uh, get one out in two weeks uh, for the uh, drawing for the um, the freebie. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to say thanks again to everybody for following me and for checking in. And uh, we'll hopefully see you here in a couple weeks. So happy stitching, and uh, hopefully your weather is warmer than ours. So <laughs> warm up. I'm going to go have a cup of tea, warm up a little bit, and then uh, probably try to do a little stitching myself. So. All right. Bye-bye.